oxygen administration. Introduction to the module. Oxygen administration, also known as supplemental oxygen, is the use of oxygen as a medical treatment and emergency situation. It increases the amount of oxygen your lungs receive and deliver it to your blood. There's specific time and conditions for having emergency oxygen. Learning objective. After completing this module, you will be able to recognize the necessity of oxygen administration, identify the anatomy of respiratory system and function of lung, emergency oxygen and its use, Detect chronic overbreathing, which is chronic deregulation. Introduction to oxygen administration. Every cell in the human body needs oxygen to survive. However, during an emergency, the body may deliver or inspire, inhale, lower than normal oxygen levels, oxygen leading to organ and brain damage and cardiac arrest. The use of supplemental oxygen may delay damage to vital organs, stabilize the heart, and even save a life. It's important to note that the air we breathe every day is not 100% oxygen. In fact, the atmosphere is composed of several different gases. 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and 1% other elements. Oxygen perfusion is when the cells of the body receive oxygen-rich blood. Depending on the patient's condition, they may be able to breathe, but not perfuse an adequate supply of oxygen. Supplemental or emergency oxygen, which is provided to the patient during an emergency, contains a higher concentration of oxygen than is found in room air. Administering emergency oxygen has been shown to increase the oxygen concentration in the lungs, which allows more oxygen to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Respiration and lung function. Respiration is the exchange of carbon dioxide, the waste product from breathing, with fresh air from the atmosphere. Ventilation is the process of moving air in and out of the lungs for respiration, is accomplished by the lungs, which are the primary organs for breathing. The diaphragm, a flat muscle below the lungs, is the primary muscle for breathing. There is a right and a left lung. The right lung has three lobes, areas, upper, middle and lower. The left lung has two lobes, upper and lower. Alveoli which are small air sacs, are present in the lower lobes. Alveoli are essential because that is where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is accomplished. The alveoli, which are shaped like miniature broccoli stems, are intertwined with capillaries. The exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs through fenestrations, tiny holes, along the alveoli and capillary beds. The lungs receive blood from the body for two reasons dash. Exchange of carbon dioxide for oxygen. Each breath you inhale brings fresh oxygen into the lungs. As you exhale, you blow off carbon dioxide. When the heart beats, it circulates deoxygenated blood to the lungs alveoli, where carbon dioxide is exchanged for oxygen. From the lungs, the freshly oxygenated blood is pumped back to the heart and then out to the body from the lungs. Lung survival. The bronchial arteries are the blood supply to the lungs that keep them alive and functioning. Any condition or injury that affects air or blood flow to the lungs, the actual functioning of the lungs, or the delivery of oxygenated blood to the tissues, may result in hypoxia. What is emergency oxygen? Supplemental oxygen for patient use is a compressed gas. It is classified as a drug. 
points to be noted. The concentration of supplemental oxygen stored in a cylinder is 100%. People who provide supplemental oxygen must be trained in its use and storage. Oxygen sold for patient use is categorized as either medical oxygen or emergency oxygen. Although the concentrations are the same medical oxygen requires a prescription for use. Oxygen delivery is calculated by the number of oxygen liters per minute, LPM. Medical oxygen is delivered at a rate of less than 6 LPM, or for a duration of less than 15 minutes. First aiders and trained rescuers use emergency oxygen. It does not require a prescription. It is delivered at a minimum rate of 6 LPM for at least 15 minutes. Also, it must be clearly labeled as emergency oxygen per the FDA and packaged with the appropriate delivery device. Guidelines for the use of emergency oxygen may differ at the state and local level. So local medical control or EMS agencies should be contacted to identify any local practices or guidelines that may differ from this training. When to use emergency oxygen? Emergency oxygen is used primarily to correct mild to moderate hyposemia, inadequate oxygenation of the blood, and reduce the cardiopulmonary effort to avoid further critical damage. Use oxygen to treat breathing difficulty based on the patient's condition and respiratory rate. First, aiders can consider the use of emergency oxygen to treat the following. Respiratory rates that are too fast or too slow. Adult. Less than 12 or more than 20 breaths per minute. Shield. Less than 15 or more than 30 breaths per minute. Infant. Less than 25 or more than 50 breaths per minute. No breathing. Cyanosis. Diving decompression injury. Critical situation or life-threatening emergency. During a critical situation or life-threatening emergency, however, the use of emergency oxygen should not delay life-saving treatments, such as chest compressions or applying direct pressure on a bleeding wound. Only use emergency oxygen after EMS 911 has been activated, and when there are additional trained first aiders or rescuers available to provide emergency oxygen without interrupting life-saving activities, in first aid or certain first responses, oxygen is used to treat abnormal respiratory rates, the absence of breathing, or signs of difficulty breathing. Patient assessment. When administering emergency oxygen to treat difficulty breathing, first aiders should assess the patient's work and effort of breathing, and then calculate the number of respirations per minute, RPM. normal breathing, regular rise and fall of both sides of the chest, slight movement of the abdomen, regular rhythm, silent and effortless, signs of breathing difficulty can include labored breathing, using accessory muscles in the neck and back, heaving chest, speaking in broken sentences, Noisy breathing, coughing, wheezing. Tripod position, sitting up position supported on arms. Cyanosis. Chronic over breathing. Scientific research and the experience of thousands have shown the vital importance of learning how to breathe correctly. The problem is that correct breathing, which should be everyone's birthright, has become extremely challenging in our modern society. It's assumed that the body reflexively knows how much air it needs at all times, but unfortunately, this is not the case. 
Over the centuries, the environment has been altered so dramatically that many people have forgotten their natural breathing. The breathing process has been warped by chronic stress, sedentary lifestyles, unhealthy diets, overheated homes, and lack of fitness. Modern living gradually increases the amount of air you breathe, and while getting more oxygen into your lungs might seem like a good idea, it is, in fact, light breathing that is a testament to good health and fitness. The biggest obstacle to your health and fitness is a rarely identified problem, that is, chronic over-breathing. You can breathe two to three times more air than required without knowing it. The unconscious habit of over-breathing has hit epidemic proportions all across the industrialized world, and it's highly detrimental to your health. Chronic over-breathing leads to loss of health, poor fitness, and compromised performance and contributes to many ailments, including anxiety, asthma, fatigue, insomnia, heart problems, and even obesity. Highlights from this module The use of supplemental oxygen may delay damage to vital organs, stabilize the heart, and even save a life. Administering emergency oxygen has been shown to increase the oxygen concentration in the lungs, which allows more oxygen to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Respiration is the exchange of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, the waste product from breathing, with fresh air from the atmosphere. From the lungs, the freshly oxygenated blood is pumped back to the heart and then out to the body. It's assumed that the body reflexively knows how much air it needs at all times, but unfortunately, this is not the case. Thank you. You have reached the end of this module. See you in the next one.